Many people come to me for help, for healing. And I get that, and I'm for it, and I want to help. But to truly help you is not just to get you healed, but to teach you how to stay healed, but also to teach you how to stand while you're getting healed or learning to be healed. Does that make sense? Because the, the problem comes up whenever people who hear that God wants to heal, and, but then they're sick and they're having pain. Usually pain is the big culprit because it's there and it's something tangible that they can feel. And so it's on them all the time. And because of that, they say, well, I believe in healing. I've studied healing. I've got the word on it. I've got the scriptures on it. And then, but then they, and I say, okay, well, what are you doing? Well, you know, I believe that I've received and I've done, you know, and why ain't it working? Okay, first off, if you say, why ain't it working? After you say, I have believed that I received, you did not believe you receive. See, these are all just words, just like love. People think just because they say, I love you, that, they, that, that that's the, the um, fulfillment of them loving you, right? The scripture is very clear. Don't just love in word only, but in deed, in action, right? And so love is an action, not just in words. And it's the same thing with faith. Faith is an action. And I'm not talking about, well, I can't walk, so faith is going to be me standing up. I'm not talking about that. Faith is the action in your spirit and in your soul that actually can cause you to stand in the middle of the adversity, in the middle of the problem, and you stand in that thing believing that by his stripes you were healed, and now you have agreed with that, and you say, this is the way it is, and you fight through. Now, many times it doesn't just run away right away. There is a fighting through that thing that the church has to get hold of, and the problem is they want instant gratification, instant results, instant freedom, and everybody does, and that is God's will, right? However, just because it is intended to be instant doesn't mean you don't have an enemy, doesn't mean that he runs off right away. It means sometimes that you have to fight through him and get through that situation, and you have to be able to stand to do it. This is where most Christians fail. Most Christians, they will say a stand with their mouth, for in the beginning, but then they quickly just cave in and start agreeing with the devil and start saying what he said rather than what God has said. Now, I want to give you some scripture here, and we're going to look at this. I'm going to, matter of fact, in the next session, we're going to look at even more detail. Now, um, here's the thing. Okay. In Ephesians chapter 6, Verse 10, it says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, notice, first off, this is where most of the church is failing. We know the scripture. This isn't some out, you know, some small hidden scripture. Everybody knows the scripture. Be strong in the Lord, the power of his might. But most Christians never take that step of actually becoming strong in the Lord and with the power of his might. In other words, see, here, here's the, the essence of it. There has to be that transaction between you and God. And when I say a transaction, what I mean is this. There has to be in you. He said, let the weak say, I am strong. He, is not, he did not say, weak, lie. He didn't tell you to lie. He told you to state the truth. Now, you can recognize you're weak. Paul said, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Why? Because he said, then that's whenever God, all of God's power can come to fruition in my life. In other words, if as long as you think you can do it on your own, you will not push, a, push yourself aside and take in the strength of God and walk in his strength. But the minute you recognize, I can't handle this. Me and of who I am and myself individually as a human being, I cannot deal with this. I need the strength of God. Now, you can be strong in the Lord, right? And in, now understand, be strong in the Lord. That doesn't mean you decide, I'm going to be strong in the Lord. I'm going to be strong. I'm going to be strong. No, no. It says be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So your strength is the power of his might. 
you have to take that might into yourself for him to strengthen you because the Bible says that we are to be strengthened in our inner man. You got that? Now, what that means is this. There has to come a point if you're weak, you recognize you're weak and you call on that strength. Now, as a born again believer, you should have recognized that in the beginning and at that point, taken on the strength of God and now living in that strength continuously. It should not be periodically, right? It should be constantly. And that what that means is you never try to do it in your own power. You never try to do it. Now understand, he will strengthen you, okay? And I will show you, as a matter of fact, uh, here shortly, I'll show you something the Lord showed me this week. And I'm, I'm excited about it because it just clicked that quick as soon as I realized it. But what I'm getting at is this. If you, you have to understand, when you got born again, your spirit was recreated and everything God had, he put in you. Do you get that? In other words, all of his characteristics, all this stuff. But now we become partakers of his divine nature by the precious promises, which means we have to go to the word, find those precious promises and say, yep, that's mine. That's me. He's talking about me. You say, but, but it doesn't have your name there. No, no, it does right there. Whosoever. Yep. See, that's my first, middle and last name. Whosoever <laughs> right there, right? That's who I am. And that's talking about me. Now, if you don't believe that, you ain't saved anyway, because you got to believe that to get, even get saved. Yep. You got that? that anybody can come to him. And so you have to decide that the things he said in here, you said, that's my promise right there. He said that about me. Jesus had to do that with Isaiah 61. When he preached in Luke chapter four, he had to decide Isaiah 61 was for him. Now that's what you've got to decide that all these promises in here are for you. 